this, this international pursuit reflects his commitment to comprehensive pedagogic mastery, bridging theoretical knowledge with practical application. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me with Professor Mark Albee to get to know MSU International Opportunities. Hello, everyone. I'm going to go ahead and begin by sharing my screen. Uh, my introduction may actually have been longer than my presentation, but I'm going to tell you uh, as much as I can in 10 minutes about Michigan State University and the MSU English Language Center. Okay, so um, I'm happy, as I said, to have a few minutes today to share some information about Michigan State University and the MSU English Language Center. Since I only have about 10 minutes, we decided that the best way to share this information would be through a few short videos. Um, very briefly, to give you a, a, some idea of what these videos are about, um, the first is about MSU in general. And uh, Michigan State University is one of the largest public universities in the United States, both in terms of the size of our campus and our student population. And the first video will show you the beautiful campus that we call home, and it will give you a sense of just how large it is. The second video is a little bit longer and will provide some information to you about the English Language Center, or ELC. A number of the presenters that you have heard today are faculty members of the ELC, and the program for uh, Brazil PDPI uh, teachers who came to MSU has been run through the ELC. I included the final video just for fun to give you a taste of winter in Michigan, which uh, some of you have experienced, those of you who've come here. The last slide I will share with you will contain my email address, and I strongly encourage you to contact me if you have any questions about MSU or the ELC, whether for yourself or someone you know or for your institution. Um, Dustin and I have given many presentations uh, in different places in the world, uh, and we'd be happy to provide a more thorough presentation for you and your students about opportunities to study at MSU. So here we go. Mark, you might have to try again and share with audio. It's not coming through. Say that again? You you might have to try again and share it with audio, so not just the video feed. The volume? Uh, no, there should have been a permission where you select um, audio and video feed when you did okay, the Okay, I apologize, sheet. everyone. Hang on try one that again. So you're going to have to explain to me, Dustin, what I need to do. So when you do your screen share, there should be a settings button at the bottom of the screen that'll let you choose audio as well. Okay, let me give that a shot. Hang on one second. I thought. And there's a little checkbox, just click share sound. Um, I am not seeing a checkbox. Okay, you're on Mac though, right? So with Mac, um, it's the same. it should be the same across the bottom of the screen. Here, computer sound. Here we there we go. go. Got it. Okay, well. Beautiful enough to show twice. Is that better? Yes.
Hello, welcome to the English Language Center at Michigan State University. For over 50 years, the faculty and staff at the English Language Center have been helping international students prepare for their academic studies by improving their English language skills. One of the great things about studying at the ELC is that students are part of the Michigan State University community. Students study English while also experiencing college life at a classic American University campus. ELC students have access to all Michigan State University facilities, such as libraries, cafeterias, sports and recreation centers, museums, gardens, and the full college residential living experience. Students can attend public lectures, join hundreds of student organizations, go to campus events, concerts, and Spartan athletic games. Being a part of the MSU community offers so many opportunities to practice and use English with native speakers. Students also get to learn and experience American culture in a safe and friendly environment, making the English Language Center at Michigan State University the perfect environment for learning English. Classes are taught by highly qualified teachers who have many years of teaching experience in English as a second language here in the United States and abroad. ELC instructors also speak second or even third languages, so they know what it's like to study and learn another language. ELC classes are small, which allows teachers to give students lots of individual attention. ELC instructors give individualized feedback to students on their writing and speaking to help them communicate effectively in academic settings. In a writing class, students will learn how to write academic essays in English. And in speaking classes, students will develop their spoken English through conversation activities, pronunciation exercises, and giving class presentations. ELC instructors teach reading with a focus on strategies that are useful for different academic disciplines. The focus for listening classes is understanding academic lectures, which is a very common type of course in college. An ELC class is made up of students from many different countries. Our students are from Saudi Arabia, China, Korea, Japan, Brazil, Angola, Thailand, Vietnam, Turkey, and many other countries. At the ELC, you can build friendships with people from all over the world and create memories that will last a lifetime. We believe that the English Language Center is the best place for international students to study English because of our talented and dedicated faculty, learner-centered instruction, fun student activities, and the countless opportunities for students to practice and use their English in the Michigan State University community. We invite you to apply to our program and let us help you develop the skills you need to succeed. Okay, and as I mentioned, uh, you can find my email address here. I'm more than happy to answer questions by email or even to schedule a meeting if you're interested in learning uh, about international programs at MSU or if you have specific questions. So please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Thank you, everyone.
Thank you, Professor Markey. It was a pretty inspiring and engaging presentation of the opportunities at, at Michigan State University. Thank you for joining us. Raimundo, we don't have um, Gerardo here. Are you able to introduce Sarish? Uh, Dustin Georges is going to, to uh, present the next presentation. Sarish, just a minute. Thank you. Yes, I'm here, but I'm unable to share my screen and uh, I'm unable to turn on my camera as well. I'm gonna to try to make you a co-host and see if that helps, okay? Oh, you are a co-host. Yeah. Okay, we got problems. I just feel like I'm sure my screen and the camera. Found in STEAM, science, technology, engineering, art, mathematics, education, and 21st century skills. She brings a wealth of knowledge and experience to our virtual stage. Currently associated with the University of Minnesota, Zadish Khan has been at the foremost of educational innovation uh, and has played a pivotal, a pivotal role in transitioning to teaching languages online. Her contributions to the field extend beyond the classroom. Having been involved with TISOL Elevate and the TISOL International Convention, USA, two prestigious platforms that have further enriched her exper exper expertise. Today, Zeri Shiken will shed light on the critical intersection of STEAM, education, and 21st skills, uh, a topic of utmost relevance in our rapidly evolving world. Uh, her insights are sure to be invaluable for educators, students, and anyone interested in the future of education. As we prepare to listen to her keynote address, let us remember that the knowledge we gain today has the potential to shape the educational landscape, landscape of tomorrow. Zarish Ken's presence here is a testament to her commitment to fostering learning and innovation in the digital age. All right. Without further ado, let us warmly welcome Zarishi Khan Ken, to the virtual podium. We eagerly await the wisdom and insights you will share with us today on the fascinating journey of transitioning to teaching languages online and the broader implications it holds for the future of education. Zarishi Khan, the virtual stage is now yours. Please proceed with your keynote address. Okay, first of all, thank you very much for the introduction and I'm really happy to be a part of Teacher Education Summit and I'm also very excited to share my insights about uh, STEAM education and 21st century skills. Before I start, allow me to begin our journey into the world of STEAM education with a remarkable real life story that embodies the essence of motivation and possibility. In a quite unassuming garage in Silicon Valley, two young individuals, Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak, embarked on a journey that would forever change the landscape of technology and education. These two young individuals, uh, what makes this story particularly fascinating is that Steve Jobs did not have a formal education in computer science. Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak were not engineers by profession. They were self-taught enthusiasts 
with a burning passion for learning. Their journey led to the creation of the world's first personal computer, the Apple Inc., assembled in that very garage. This audacious venture born out of a blend of imagination and esteem principles uh, ultimately gave rise to one of the most iconic and innovative companies of our time, the Apple Inc. The story of Steve Jobs and uh, Steve Wozniak reminds us that esteem education is not confined to the classroom, nor it is limited to background age or formal training. It is a mindset, a way of thinking that thrives on curiosity, critical thinking, and a belief that with determination, anyone can shape the future. I would also like to share uh, one uh, other remarkable story, uh, which is about Maria, a young immigrant who arrived in a new country. She arrived in a new country with a, with a hope to have a better future. However, the, strug the struggle which she was facing was the language barrier. Uh, the language barrier proved to be a formidable obstacle. Maria found herself in a sea of unfamiliar words, struggling to communicate and integrate into her new community. But Maria's story took a remarkable, remarkable turn when when she encountered an ESL program that embraced STEAM education. In this innovative program, language acquisition was not limited to textbooks and vocabulary drills. Instead, Maria and her peers engaged in hands-on STEAM activities that transcended language barriers. Imagine Maria's excitement as she built a simple robot with her classmates each one sharing ideas and collaborating in a language they were still learning. Picture the moment when Maria proudly presented her project, a solar-powered toy car that she had designed and constructed, uh, and explaining its working in her developing English. As Maria dived into steam-infused ESL education, her language skills flourished. She was not merely memorizing words. She was not merely uh, she was not merely memorizing words, but she was using language as a tool for discovery, problem solving, and creation. Through science experiments, arts projects, and engineering challenges, Maria found a voice that surpassed the linguistic boundaries. This extraordinary journey of Maria serves as a beacon of inspiration. It reminds us that STEAM education, even in ESL context, goes beyond language proficiency. It cultivates critical thinking. It fosters creativity. It nurtures collaboration and in it stills the resilience to face challenges. Today, we will explore how this uh, innovative approach STEAM education not only accelerates language learning, but also equips learners with the skills and confidence to embrace the complexities of the 21st century. In the moments ahead, we will delve into the core principles of STEAM-infused ESL education, discover effective strategies, and witness the transformative impact it has it has on learners of all ages. We will celebrate the power of curiosity, creativity, and communication as we prepare our students not only to navigate the linguistic challenges of today, but to become the problem solvers and innovators of tomorrow. All right. Moving forward. I would like to emphasize on the point. Okay, before I proceed, I want to emphasize that today we will I will be covering the concept of STEAM education, why STEAM education is crucial for teachers to incorporate in today's teaching methods and uh, demonstrate how STEAM is a crucial part of 21st century skills. First of all, what is STEAM? 
STEAM is an acronym for the fields of science, technology, engineering, arts, and maths. We, uh, as we emphasize on uh, incorporating STEAM skills into our uh, into our lessons before integrating STEAM subjects, I want to emphasize what is integrated learning. Integrative learning is the process of making connections among concepts and experiences so that information and skills can be applied to novel and complex issues or challenges. You all know what is STEAM, but why STEAM is important? STEAM education is important. For far too long in education, we have been working with the presumption of teaching to ensure that our students get a good job. But what does that look like? We are preparing our students for the jobs that don't even exist. We are at a point now where it is not only possible, but imperative to facilitate those learning environments which are dynamic, relevant, fluid, and connected to the real world. STEAM education is very essential in today's era. It prepares learners to face the real world challenges. STEAM, when we talk about incorporating STEAM education, STEAM is an education approach to learning that uses science, technology, arts, engineering, and maths as access points for guiding students' inquiry, communication, and critical thinking. Through a STEAM approach, we actually integrate subjects, topics, concepts, standards, and assessments which aid students in making connections with real world. None of us go outside and say that's a tree, so that's science, and the sky is blue, so that's art. STEAM interviews all these subjects into the language lessons. Doing a STEAM in the language classroom does not mean that learners will stop engaging with language learning. On the contrary, Technologists, artists, engineers, and mathematicians all need literacy and communication. A STEAM-based learning model can ensure better preparedness for students who will enter the workforce tomorrow, regardless of role or industry. Here's a question. Why should we integrate subjects? Can I hear some responses about why should we integrate subjects? Okay, can I get some responses in the chat box? Why should we integrate subjects? All right. Uh, integration is effective at all levels and at all ages. I think integration is particularly helpful with language learning. Here I would share one of my personal stories. When I was working for a bilingual school, I was teaching English and my students also had gardening classes there. What I noticed was the words which my students most remembered were the uh, the words which my students most remembered were the ones which they learned in the garden because they got to dig in the dirt, smell the tomatoes and taste the cucumbers. That made the learning really stick. STEM, STEAM and language are in natural fit. Let's harness the power of hands-on learning and feeling connected to the subject. Why STEAM education is important? STEAM education is a unique educational approach integrating uh, science, technology, engineering, arts, and maths. This approach allows the students to apply their language learning in real life situations, thus reaching the con conceptual understanding. STEAM not only teaches the students how to think critically, solve problems, and use creativity, it prepares students to work in career areas that are predicted to experience significant growth. I want to point out, our, I, I want to ask a question. Are these examples of STEAM, drawing classes, cooking classes, 
and learning English and history in a museum. Are these examples of cooking? Oh, sorry, steam. If we are teaching a lesson based on cooking, can we incorporate steam skills in that? How can we incorporate steam skills in a cooking lesson? Can anyone add an example? Okay, can anyone tell me how can we incorporate STEAM skills into, uh, in, am I audible? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Okay. I, 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 I am asking... that you, you, may, you may have like some chemical transformations that happen in, in the cooking act. Is it? Yes. Yes. It, yes. Okay, what about drawing class? How can we incorporate STEAM skills in drawing lessons? Using, uh, working with angles, trigonometry. Uh, working with angles, working with technical drawing, things like that, is it? Yes, it is, it definitely. I also want to know learning English and history in a museum. What about, what do you think about this? Uh, let me first say that the the the, the audience cannot ask uh, ask questions orally. Uh, they have to type their questions in the Q and A box. Okay. Uh, yeah. That is, I think that in in a history class, you may say how people saw technology at that time, how houses were built, how uh, roads were made at that time. What was the technology they had in the kitchen to prepare their foods? Uh, English. Uh, how much the language was influenced by the technology. As far as I know, German is a language that is full of technical expressions due to the how close the German people are to the technology. I, I may be saying some. I may be. I may be saying something wrong. I don't know. Okay. Um, as I emphasized, uh, uh, you know, as I talked about the story of a young girl, Maria, who was struggling with the language barrier. When she was uh, working and uh, she was uh, building a simple robot with her classmates, what happened? She, they were sharing ideas and collaborating in a language they were still learning. So if, if a class is learning something about history, and they are asked to uh, they are asked to present something based on history or based on museum definitely they are also able to incorporate steam skills if even if they are learning uh, about history if they are learning their lessons in a historical place there are different ways to uh, incorporate steam definitely none of us will go outside and say that's a tree so that is science or the sky is blue so that is art. So we have to keep this thing in our mind. Okay, moving forward. I have a question here. What is the connection between STEAM education and 21st century? What is the connection between STEAM education and 21st century skills oh well as i don't have questions here in the q q a uh, box uh, though maybe uh, it's a period uh, probably it's because the 21st century it's a period in history that women and men they have to walk together by side by side not the men in front of the women the woman the men in front of the woman but they have to walk side by side so to have them away, a place to walk, we need technology. To control the velocity of the walk, we have we need technology. So there are so many things involved where you have okay. to have women side by side with yeah. women. Is it? Is it? Is that it? Yeah, it is. And you can also, I think you will be, if you are able to see my screen, uh, as the world is rapidly changing in terms of technology and knowledge, there are skills which students and humans in, ge uh, in general need for the changing world to get a better education and a competitive environment around the world. To 21st century is a century of skills and abilities. So if we want to succeed in this digital world, we need all the required skills and abilities. 
Steam Education incorporates four C's of 21st century, which are creativity, critical thinking, collaboration, and communication. These 21st century skills are generally refer referring to the core competencies of digital learning, critical thinking, and problem solving in the real world. Esteem in language learning and 21st century skills. As far as esteem education is concerned, esteem education can be applied in any subject, whether it's history, English, science, biology, anywhere esteem education can be applied. Esteem education, esteem in language learning and 21st century skills. When we talk about creativity and innovation, when we talk about critical thinking and problem solving, when we talk about communication and collaboration, we definitely see the connection between twenty uh, between STEAM education and 21st century skills, but how can the development of 21st century skills support language learning? It goes both ways. How can language learning support the development of 21st century skills? Um, are you able to see my screen? Yes, yes, we, we are. Okay. okay, so we are going to look at how these skills can be developed in classrooms through activities and also how can how they can be connected specifically to English language learning. I have a few specific suggestions on how to make connections between 21st century skills and language learning. Uh, if we talk about uh, creativity and innovation, if if we want to emphasize on this on these skills, creativity and innovation in our classroom, what we can do, we can use esteem topics and thinking to focus on specific vocabulary and grammar structures. Obviously, vocabulary is a really important part of any language learning experience. I think both the topics and thinking can help with vocabulary development and we'll be looking at that more specifically through one of our activities. Critical thinking and problem solving. Uh, we can build STEAM language skills through structured activity activities. So what I mean by STEAM language skills are things that you might need to talk, think, or write about STEAM subjects like hypothesizing, defining, sorting, categorizing, and justifying. Communication and collaboration. You have to involve learners in projects where they have to communicate and collaborate, where they have to come up with their own idea, where they have to solve the task on their own. Teachers will definitely serve, but they will serve uh, as a guide on the side, students, teachers have to allow the students to become in charge of their own learning. These things, uh, these activities don't just support 21st century skills. They are relevant to how we study and learn language. We can use STEAM activities to develop a way of thinking. It will help learners think creatively and critically as they learn English grammar and vocabulary. As I mentioned earlier, STEAM education can be incorporated into any subject. Now I will, uh, we will be having uh, an activity. We'll visit our first activity. You see two pictures on my screen. I just want to know, um, what's the same and what's different between these two objects? What you notice? What's the same between these two? objects and what's different? Well, the same as the color. What's different? They're different fruit. Probably from, probably from different uh, environments on Earth. Okay, so we can say that the color is the same and both are fruits. Yeah, they're fruits. 
Yeah, and they are red. Uh, probably they they because of their color, they signalize that they are from a, a specific period of the year. Maybe they are from the very beginning of the the season of fruits uh, in more in hotter yes, places, in warmer places. Grown, um, yeah, they both are grown in a garden. The color is the same, but sh the shape is different. Both have a stem, both come from nature. So yes, wonderful everyone. Okay, let me okay. get some answers here from the from the chat. There's talking yeah. about the texture. They're talking about the taste. Thank you, Monica. Uh, Malika is making clear that tomato is a fruit. Thank you, Malika. Uh, yeah, Aurelena, the taste is different. Let me yeah. see what else. Uh, Yashodara, something like that, is saying that one is used in cooking. Uh, Nilson is saying that they have different sizes. Sadia said something about seeds, shape. Uh, Luzia said that they are planted in different seasons. Rosilda said that one has the, the seeds inside and another one outside. Yeah. Some of them have mentioned that one is a fruit and one is a vegetable. That is also fine. Okay, okay. Uh, Malika is, is adding that tomato is a fruit taken in the summer. News on the grow different. Francisco, they have the same color, their fruit, but we can eat them differently. Uh, tomato is a fruit, shape is different. Well, uh, they are healthy. They're both healthy. Thank you, Valani. Both come from nature and both can be grown in a garden, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. So now let's think what you can do with this in the classroom. What is possible to be done with these activities uh, to make those connections? How can we make those connections using this activity? As I mentioned earlier, there's a connection between the 21st century skills and language learning and you can use 21st century skills to support language learning and vice versa. But I want to know through this activity, how can you make that connection? Oh, let me see here. No answers yet. Uh, maybe in the classroom, you can talk about the size. You can talk about shape. You can talk about uh, the, the how they, they uh, touch our senses. Uh, smell, things like that. Yeah, we can do that, but I want to know uh, something specific that how can you use this activity to make those connections? Like, how can you make connections between language learning and 21st century skill through this activity? Oh, let me see here. Fascinating is saying that talking about uh, your favorite fruit, what is it? I'm uh, thinking, uh, I am um I think I can maybe um put the question in the chat box. That could be it, it will help. Yeah. Oh Monica is, is saying here that you make it two groups and let them guess which group has which fruit. Okay. But you want to know yes. something more specific? Uh, Why the twenty first century? Is I that... I really like uh, Miss Monia's idea, but I have uh, another part of this question. I want to know, as, as I emphasized earlier, that uh, there is a connect. Like I have questioned how to make connections between twenty first century skills and language learning. And here I have put an activity which which shows that, I mean, um, uh, as I shared the activity with you all, I want to know what could be a way to make connection, you know, to make the connection between 21st century skill and, lang and language learning. Okay, I, I'll be talking about that. So basically, this activity can be used in a variety of ways to make those connections. Let's examine this particular one for this prompt. You can use esteemed topics and thinking to focus on a specific vocabulary, but what could that look like in your classroom? You can use what's the same, what's different as a way to make the introduction of new vocabulary more engaging 
and to get students talking and thinking and using the words right away. Imagine that you are introducing a vocabulary list that includes fruits and vegetables, for example. This is a pretty common that we see in English classes with beginning and intermediate students. But it's instead of reading through the list, try using two of the relevant objects for discussion of what's the same, what's different. You can also uh, practice the core vocabulary using this activity, but this vocabulary gives us more than just focusing on core vocabulary because to engage in this discussion, students will discover that they need more words to express their ideas. You will not give them those words in advance. In, um, instead, you can let the supplemental vocabulary emerge from student thinking. They might not know these words, but if they have got an idea they want to share, they'll try. So let them show you maybe through gestures or, or by describing the word with other words or by just saying it in the first language and translating it for them. And you can uh, record the words on the board. After discussion, students can add these new words to their list and they will have more ownership because they have come up and, and they have used them. Okay, I have two responses in the chat box and I would, I would like to see. Okay, all right, so i hope this activity will help you in making connection between uh esteem am i audible yes you are okay all right okay okay so we learned about this particular task but now i want to know uh i want to know about critical thinking and problem solving as i mentioned earlier we can build STEAM language skills through structured activities. So what I mean by uh, structured activities, what could be the structured activities? Let me see here. What do I have in the, uh, the Q, Q in a, a box? No questions. Okay, I have a question. I want to know about uh, what is project-based learning in STEAM? Could you please repeat the question? Yeah, I am putting it in the chat box. What is pro project-based learning in STEAM? Okay, thanks, Zarish. Yeah, I have put it in the chat box. Okay, so can I get any responses? What is project-based learning in STEAM? And what do you think? Is project-based learning important? Uh, Zerish, I, I think it is very important because uh, what I have seen in my school and what I have read, it really involves the students. The students really get committed to the result of the project. And if, while they are developing the project, they develop language. They develop their uh, skills of communication. Okay. I have here okay. the answer from Lara, Lara Dias. Uh, I guess it is an educational approach that emphasizes hands-on interdisciplinary projects to help students develop critical thinking and so on. Uh, Mary, 
Meiri is saying PBL is a team involved students designing, developing hands-on solution to a problem. Thanks, Mary. Francineide, it can help students make connections about their experience with a language that he or she is learning. Uh, Malika PBL is a team address student uh, addressing students' needs. That's it. That's all the answers we got here. Okay. And Luana is um, adding that's a wonderful tool. Yeah. In the beginning, in the beginning, uh, I talked about Maria, a young immigrant who arrived in a new country uh, with little more than a dream and determination to build a vet better life. However, I also mentioned that the language barrier proved to be a formidable obstacle. Maria found herself in a sea of unfamiliar words, struggling to communicate and integrate into her new community. Her story took, I'm repeating this story because it has a connection with project-based learning. Her story took a remarkable turn when she joined an ESL program that embraced STEAM education. In this innovative program, the language learning was not limited to textbooks or the vocabulary drills. Instead, Maria and her peers engaged in hands-on STEAM activities that surpassed that language barrier. While Maria was building a simple robot with her classmates, remember, each one was sharing ideas and collab collaborating in a language that they were still learning. So are you able to connect that story uh, with the project-based learning right now? Through science experiments, art projects, and engineering challenges, Maria found a voice that actually uh, surpassed the linguistic boundaries. During project-based learning, Maria cultivated critical thinking. She fostered creativity and she nurtured collaboration. And she learned how to solve problems and how to create things. This is, uh, this is all about, uh, like this is what project-based learning is about. In project, what happens in project-based learning and what happens in, in a traditional approach. Is there any difference? Uh, let me see here, okay. questions from the Q&A box. Uh, no, yeah. I don't. Uh, in traditional approaches to teaching, like previously, uh, the, tra the traditional approaches were being used. So in traditional approaches to teaching, Teacher simply transmit knowledge to students. Teacher is giving information and student is receiving information. It is like a banking metaphor. Teachers deposit knowledge into students' head. In project-based learning, teachers create projects that require students to work together to develop, so develop solutions to real-world questions and problems. This way, students communicate and collaborate. Teachers, as I mentioned earlier, teachers serve as a guide on the site. Students are in charge of their own learning. Teachers do not impart all the information or, or like teachers are not imparting all the information and students are taking notes, no. However, teachers choose topics which are relevant to students' daily lives and teachers have to create projects that are meaningful to students in PBL, in project-based learning, students do the project as a class and they solve problems on their own. They think critically and creatively. Project-based learning is a form of learning by doing. Excuse me, Zarish. Zarish, yeah. we, we are about, we're running out of time. So uh, can you... What else can you say in just one minute so we can finish and move to our next step or our next event in the in this whole event? What can you say to to close your your saying, your speaking, your lecture? Yeah, I just want to conclude about I just want to conclude uh, with the uh, you know with the following points that uh, in today's world, STEAM education is really important, whether you are teaching English, science, technology, or anything. STEAM education is helpful for every subject because um, STEAM 
is uh, giving you a chance to uh, steam helps learners steam gives students a chance where they get an opportunity to make connection with the real world so i would like to end my uh, talk here with uh, with this with this quote the steam approach strives to prompt curiosity interest and wonder through exploration discovery and hands on learning Thank you very much, Arish, for your very nice, very interesting speech, very enjoyable. Thank you, all the audience, for the very good questions, the very good insights that you have given. Now, we are going to move to our next event that will be the workshops. No, no workshops, sorry. Oh, the tribute, sorry, I'm sorry. We're going now to move on to our tribute. Zerish, thank you very much. Oh. You're welcome. It was happy. Okay. That's it. Hey, Cantalis. Você pode ligar a câmera agora, tudo bem? So, would you like me to share the video, Raymond, or do you have a thing to talk about before? Posso ligar a câmera? Pode, pode ligar, sim. Just a, just a minute, this. She's going to turn on the camera. Maria, just made her a co-host, maybe that'll help her get in. Aparecendo, tá aparecendo que não pode iniciar ah, porque eu... o host não deixa. Right, and Dustin, can you can you make her a co-host because she can't turn on the camera? Cantalis, Maria Luisa. Yep, I've made her one, so she should be able to do it. Mm -hmm. Tente agora para ver, Cantalis. Opa, deu certo. Agora deu certo. Uhum. <laughs> uh, Am I able to respond? Yes. Uh, então é o seguinte, é, a gente essa sessão aqui a gente vai uh, apresentar, fazer um tributo ao professor Alfred e a Lara vai ficar aqui nos auxiliando, né? Porque a Catalina ela não fala inglês compreende um pouco, mas aí a gente vai fazer esse tipo de, de serviço, tá bom? Então a gente agradece aqui, então eu passo a, a, a fala para a Cantalice, né? e logo depois da fala da Cantalice nós temos um pequeno vídeo para apresentar é, dos momentos do professor Alfred aqui conosco no, no Piauí. Cantalice, então, você fala, você fala um pouquinho e aí a, a Lara traduz, tá bom? Era para a Lara ficar no dispositivo aqui, não era para não. É Dusty. I'm here. Ok, good. <risos> ok, é, Cantalice, pode, pode iniciar. Uh -huh. Ok. É, primeiro, dar uma boa tarde para todos que estão assistindo, né? Cumprimentar os presentes, né? cumprimentar as, as pessoas que estão aqui nesse evento. Agradecer ao Raimundo, que viabilizou a realização dessa homenagem a um grande professor, pesquisador, amigo, We're... Dr. Alfred Frederic. We are honoring Dr. Alfred Frederick, who was inspiring to all of us. Professor da Universidade Estadual de Nova York, no campus de Azuego, um grande educador. Uh, it was a e professor. Que okay. Fez grandes contribuições para o Estado. E ele veio para o Piauí fazer um trabalho na Secretaria de Educação 
at the Secretary of Education? É, na Secretaria Estadual de Educação, que, da qual eu faço parte, e nesse trabalho a gente iniciou um trabalho sobre currículo, né? And I was part do of this... Alice, você dá uma pausazinha para a Lara traduzir, tá bom? Você fala, dá uma tá pausazinha bom. e ela... Tá bom? Obrigado, valeu. <risos> so, okay. uh, we conducted a work together and I was honored by having him by my side. É, nesse trabalho que eu conheci o professor Alfred, que me tornei uma, um amigo e um irmão. É, nosso he, became, convívio... he became a brother and also a friend. And I met him while I was doing this job. We were doing this job together. So uh, I appreciate, actually, I want to honor him by saying a few words about his job. E essa amizade do no seu desaparecimento, né? Que, que me dói muito ter, não tê-lo mais presente. Porque o Alfred, é, ele se tornou um grande amigo, não só meu, como de muitos alunos, de muitos professores. He became not only a good friend to me, but also to many students and many professors. So we we feel a lot of pain uh, in order because he's not here with us. Alfred, falar do Alfred é assim muito prazeroso porque Alfred era um uma pessoa muito agradável. Ele Alfred era... was a very delightful person. Ele ele como ele se denominava, ele era um cidadão do mundo. Nasceu no Alabama. Of the world. He e nominated morou... himself this way. E morou em seis continentes. É. He lived in six continents. É, veio para o Brasil, começando por Santa Maria, no Rio Grande do Sul, ele fez um trabalho como professor visitante por bastante tempo. Depois é que ele veio ao Piauí e he também to the... conosco. First, he came to Rio Grande do Sul, it's the southeast of Brazil, and then he came to work with us in the northeast of Brazil. E aqui no Piauí... Ele também veio como professor visitante. And here Desenvol... in Rio, he was also a uh, he was also a professor here, right? In Piauí. É, para a Universidade Estadual do Piauí, que a gente chama UESP. É? It's a, it is called UESP. It, uh, it stands for State University of Piauí. Alfred, ele era um cidadão que tinha muitos desejos e muitos sonhos. Ele tinha um desejo de mudar, de fazer fortes mudanças na Alfred sociedade. Had, Alfred had many desires and many wishes in order to change many things. Uh, he was nominated as the citizen of the world, so he really was looking forward to making some big changes. Ele desejava uma sociedade mais justa e igualitária. Isso era muito presente na sua fala, nas suas palestras. He was looking forward to having a fair society uh, where, where, where we could see equality, among all of us. So he was known by these qualities. Um grande defensor dos direitos humanos. O professor Alfred defendia, lutava 
por uma educação multicultural. A great defender of human rights, he was fighting for uh, the rights of every citizen. Uma educação que é, considerasse o saber que cada aluno já tem da sua vida, da sua comunidade, da sua cultura. E esse era o tema que trabalhávamos nem todos os cursos, em todas as, é, as aulas e as pesquisas que ele fazia de uma so, educação. He was a great educator, so he was uh, looking forward to having uh, and giving the best education to all people that surround was surrounded by him. Uh, such as students, professors. É, também era grande a sua vontade de, de trabalhar e de lutar por uma sociedade menos racista, pelo menos, né? É, Se não que totalmente acabasse o racismo, mas que pelo menos e esse racismo fosse é, diminuído. E isso era muito presente. A gente, por onde andava, se estávamos passeando, se estávamos lendo um livro, o Alfred ele demonstrava, e ele mostrava para a gente com exemplos concretos Quanto o racismo so, estava presente na vida das pessoas. He wanted to combat racism and he was using lots of uh, educate, educators, uh, lots of tools that involve education, such as books and so on. He was inspired, so he was a great inspiration because he was fighting for some kinds of Uh, some kinds of topics that include racism and he was a great uh, combater of this specific topic. É, enquanto pesquisador, o Dr. Alfred é, fez uma pesquisa em Santa Maria, que já temos um livro, né? fez a mesma pesquisa no Benin, na África e aqui no Piauí também, por, por um momento que a gente viveu, eu coordenei com ele a pesquisa, que infelizmente a pesquisa do Piauí estava quase pronta, faltávamos é, fazer uma revisão, foi quando ele partiu. Estávamos, tinha marcado já a, a vinda dele para cá, para a gente fazer a revisão da pesquisa. Porque o sonho dele era essa pesquisa feita aqui no Brasil, em dois estados, Piauí e, e, e Rio Grande. We work, work together to conduct a research that, unfortunately, we didn't have enough time to finish. So it was conducted in two places, Piauí and... Piauí e Rio Grande do Sul. Piauí e Rio Grande do Sul, the south east e of Benin, Brazil. E Benin, na África. E Benin, África. Então, o sonho dele era fazer, juntar essas pesquisas em três línguas, né? em português, em inglês e francês. He, he's, he had a desire to get all this research together in Portuguese, English, and... Francês. And French. E, pois é. E, nós, infelizmente, fomos surpreendidos com a sua partida e ficamos com o material 
a C, eu não sei agora, eu vou sentar com o grupo de pesquisadores para ver o que faremos com o material. We have the material, but unfortunately, he's no longer with us. So we are still checking about what, uh, what kind of uh, decision we should make regarding, uh, because he's not here with us anymore. So we are still looking for a way to get all these materials together without him. É... Enquanto o Alfred estava aqui como professor, ele era uma pessoa muito inquieta, ele não parava. A gente vivia eternamente é, discutindo para elaborar coisas. We were always discussing. He was a non-stop person because he was always thinking about new projects, new things. So he was a non-stop uh, creator. E aí, nessa passagem dele como professor visitante, fizemos, nessa sua inquietude, vários eventos internacionais, vários seminários internacionais. We organized a lot of seminars, international ones, a lot of international events with his presence. Ele... Ele trazendo, fazendo esse intercâmbio, trazendo pessoas da sua universidade e de outras universidades que ele conhecia, que ele tinha é, amizades, e foi was, muito proveitoso. He was always bringing uh, out new people to take part in these events, professors from other universities, uh, a lot of influence people and uh, we were really pleased to have him and his colleagues in all of these events he was uh, conducting. Um grande educador, pesquisador. Né? A great e... educator, a great researcher. Alfred, além de ter deixado e influenciado a maneira de educação, ele deixou uma grande obra que foi Suas Lições de Vida. De uh, uh, he not only left us, but also he left a lot of uh, lessons uh, in order to remember his life. De vida, de coragem, de persistência e de luta pelos menos favorecidos. He was fighting for the, the poor, the, the ones who didn't, didn't have many rights. He was fighting for the minority. Ele, como, como, como eu já falei, ele deixou um legado, tanto para a educação do Piauí, e como para outras pessoas que não tinham contato com a universidade. Ele buscava he conhecer a realidade. He was uh he left a legacy of a person who was fighting for their rights. He was remarkable to us because he was always uh honoring the the minority. Por esse legado e por essa contribuição que o Alfred deu a, aos piauienses, ele recebeu o título de cidadão piauiense aqui pela nossa Assembleia Legislativa do Estado. The state has honored him with a title of a piauiense citizen due to all his work here in Piauí, all his honorable work. So he was honored by the state and he got a title of a Piauiense citizen. Era o mínimo que a gente podia fazer por ele. It was the least we could do for him. 
enquanto vida, né? While he was alive. Ó, oh, se eu fosse contar mais coisas do Alfred, tem muitas histórias. If Ele é uma pessoa muito alegre. I'll, if if I could tell you all of the stories we have been through, it would be a lot. He was a very fun person. We would have lots of stories to share. Nessa sua alegria, ele promoveu muitas festas culturais, inclusive, trazendo he... pessoas que ele conhecia nas andanças dele e ele cantores, músicos, e ele promovia sempre uma festa, sempre estava promovendo festas ao final do período que a gente se encontrava aqui no Piauí. He promoted a lot of parties, uh, parties that involved all the, the specific people that he was working for, like all his colleagues, and he was a very fun person because he was like uh he was really happy to conduct all of these parties é, como eu sei que não temos muito tempo as histórias mais pessoais eu não posso contar porque leva muito tempo do, do que vivíamos durante esse período aqui If we have more time, I, would, I would let you know about all of the stories we have been through, but I want to. Eu quero encerrar esse momento de homenagem a esse afro-americano, né? Como ele se considerava afro-americano, nascido no Alabama e I brasileiro. Né? Brasileiro também, him. porque ele recebeu o título de cidadão piauiense. He ele the title, so he was considered to be a Brazilian person too. Então eu quero encerrar lendo um pequeno texto que eu fiz. Embora I want você... to reading a small text that I made by myself. Alfred, embora você não esteja mais conosco fisicamente, sua Alfred. presença e influência persistem. Uh, as you are no longer with us, your presence and influence are here with us. We can feel it. Persistem vivas em nossos corações e mentes. We can feel your presence in our hearts and minds. Suas lições de vida. Your life lessons. Seu amor pelo conhecimento. Your love, uh, your love in guiding to your knowledge. E sua dedicação ao ensino continuam a nos inspirar diariamente. And your inspiration to education continue to inspire us day by day. Sua luz brilha através das memórias. Your light shines through the memories we have. Que compartilhamos. E nas vidas que você tocou. The, uh, the, lives, the lives you have touched. Você é eterno. Em nosso you are eternal. afeto e gratidão. You are eternal. Our gratitude and our affections are eternal. Thank e you. Muito obrigada. Thank you. Okay, muito obrigado, Tantaliz, pelas palavras de carinho, de afeto, uh, pelo professor Alfred, no, nosso professor Alfred, grande defensor dos direitos humanos. E aí a gente vai passar aqui um vídeo agora é, sobre os, alguns momentos dele aqui conosco no Piauí, tá bom? E aí, é, Dustin, can you play, can you share the video, please? Esse vídeo, ele é um pouquinho da história, ele não vai ter som, mas ele vai ter um pouquinho né, 
Somente no YouTube o pessoal vai ver o somzinho dele. Que é o professor Alfred na comunidade de Mimbó, na escola é, aqui em Teresina, na escola da prefeitura. É o netinho dele, família. Aqui é nos seminários internacionais, ali em Mimbó, com a doutora Geneva Gay. E ele visitando né, os trabalhos dele no, na África, no Brasil. África e Brasil, dois lugares que ele esteve. Né? É, sentiremos muito sua falta, professor Alfred. É isso. É... Parece um sonho. Sim. Olha o Cantalice. Olha aí, Cantalice. Uhum. A Marcílio Rangel, aqui em Teresina, ele visitando a escola Marcílio Rangel, com o professor Mar, que não pôde estar com a gente. Ele está nesse seminário, mas teve um problema. Raimundo, uh, do I have to translate all of you guys speaking? Yeah, it would be good. Ok. Aqui. Um pouco do trabalho dele né, na universidade. Um pouco sobre seu trabalho. Ele era um viajante do mundo. Eu queria conhecer e gostava de estar com as pessoas. Ele era um globetrotter. Ele era um world traveler. Foi professor em, em Bruxelas. De, de crianças pequenas. Ele me contava todas as suas histórias. He was a professor in Brussels, so uh, he used to tell me all of his stories. Aí, novamente, ele... Algumas partes do mundo. Again, Aí, ele... moments throughout the world. Ele, ele era, eu estava vendo essas crianças nessa foto. Ele era uma pessoa muito generosa. Ele Mas ajudava é cinco famílias na, na, lá no Benin a estudar. Ele used to help five families in Benin to study. He used to help them, all of them. Não sei como isso vai ficar, porque ele I don't mantinha... know how it's gonna work from now on. E uma coisa muito particular do Alfred é que a casa do Alfred ele era Olha quase aí. que um museu. Olha aí ele recebeu, ele recebeu né? o título o de piauiense. Cidadão piauiense. In this picture we can see him receiving his title of uh, his title, piauiense title. Olha a universidade title. estadual aí presente com ele, né? The State University is always um, is here presented as well. Okay. Como eu estava falando, só para concluir, ele a casa do Alfred é um verdadeiro museu, porque por onde ele andava, ele levava tudo que ele achava interessante para trabalhar com os alunos a educação multicultural. E ele fazia ele tá... eventos na casa dele, levando os alunos, como ele fazia aqui, só que não era na casa dele. A gente fazia em outros espaços, né? Uh, a fun fact about him, it, because, it was because he turned his home into a museum. He used to take his students to his home in order to, to teach him using these uh, uh, marvelous pieces of art and into and he turned his class into an interdisciplinary 
discipline. So he used to okay. use his home as a, uh, as also uh, as a second school. Ok, pessoal, a gente precisa agora, né? Obrigado, Cantalice, por se juntar aqui a nós e nós agradecemos esse momento, né, para expressar esse trabalho. Eu que agradeço. Fantástico. E vamos e você agora, pessoal. Ter proporcionado esse momento. Para o Obrigada, mundo. viu? Obrigada. Obrigada okay, a todos. Folks, uh, ok, folks, now we are about to move to our, to our next session, the, the workshop moment. So I, I ask you kindly to follow the the two different uh, links. We are going to have two different workshops from 3, uh, 3.30 to 4.30. And after that, we have more three workshops. So you decide which work workshop you want to join. So the links are available in the WhatsApp group and we are going to put these links um, uh, in the... You have the, this link available, okay? So join. Now we are going to have the workshop and we close this session. Thank you so much, Dustin, for this moment. Thank